Hello, this is Derek Fournier with WhatTheBuck.net with our preview for the New Orleans Saints. The Saints come into Tampa, and as uh, Mr. Prisco mentioned in his video, uh, the visiting team has won four games in a row in this battle between NFC South foes. Now, the NFC South has been ruled in recent years by the Saints. I know the Atlanta Falcons fans will bristle at that, but the Saints have been the class of this division. Drew Brees is a stud. He's got stud weapons around him at all sides, and as long as those guys are on the field, they have a chance to compete. These guys are putting up points in bunches. Uh, but this is a game that no one has given the Bucks any chance to win. Coming off of the 48-3 to drubbing that we received from the San Francisco 49ers, compounding that with the fact that our, our leader, our field general, Josh Freeman, has not looked particularly sharp. Our number one receiver, Mike Williams, seems to be mired in a sophomore slump, and we've got a pile of injuries that would scare almost anyone with our starting tailback, Garrett Blunt, being out for an indeterminate amount of time with an unknown injury uh, that's been reported as a grade 2 MCL uh, strain, but we don't know, actually. Uh, with Gerald McCoy looking like he's out with a high ankle sprain, with Mason Foster gimped up, uh, no one really has given the Buccaneers any chance whatsoever to beat the Saints. This is an all-important division game. We have an opportunity to, to go to 2-0 and in the NFC South, which would be huge, and right the ship in the second quarter, which we knew was going to be tough when you had San Francisco, New Orleans, Chicago, New Orleans, with trips to the West Coast and to London. This is a grind, right? So when you look at the, the stuff on tape and what we can actually do against the Saints, this, this game isn't a mystery. This team hasn't changed significantly in recent years. The keys to the game against New Orleans Saints are, in my opinion, as follows. You've got to turn this into a black and blue game. New Orleans Saints are going to complete passes. Their receivers remind me of the sort of uh, late 90s, early 2000s Rams receivers. Even though they're bigger, they do not like to get hit. As big as Colson is, he doesn't like to get hit. If they're going to make those receptions, you've got to make them pay for making those receptions. No, I'm not talking about playing dirty or cheap. I'm talking about hitting these guys in the mouth. They will give up the ball if you hit them hard. Now, additionally, Drew Brees is a stud. He's going to pick up your blitzes. He's going to make you pay when you take risks. But he is not a tall quarterback. The pressure in his three- and five-step drops have to come from the middle, which is horrible because McCoy is out and he's been getting good pressure. I know we're talking about using Daquan Bowers at the three technique. I'd like to see us go with Brian Price at the three technique, but whatever we do, I think Frank Oakham better get a heavy dose in there and push that pocket back to create some sort of chaos in the passing lanes for Drew Brees so that he can't see into the middle of the field where he will most certainly try and target Graham, his tight end, who he treats almost like an X receiver. They really do focus on him a significant amount. The other one that we've got to do is we've got to try and keep Brees off the field. The best way to neutralize a great passer is to keep him off the field. And to do that, I think that the Bucks' offense and Coach Olsen have got to not give up on the run simply because LeGarrette may not be up. Whether that means uh, Ernest Graham or Craig Lumpkin, it doesn't really matter. We've got to make sure that we try and control the clock and have those long, sustained drives. I know that sounds like rudimentary football, but it really is that simple. Now, looking at the tape on the defensive side of the ball for the Saints, the front four doesn't scare me, even though they seem to get a lot of pressures uh, when you look at the stats. They don't look overwhelming. Their linebackers are, are led by Jonathan Vilma, who is an absolute animal and is terrific in coverage, but he does tend to get on his horse too quick. If you can drag him downfield with Kellen Winslow, our drag routes underneath either uh, Rillius Ben or to even Preston Parker should be available. Additionally, their linebackers get sucked in the same way ours do, so I've seen teams have a significant amount of success by running towards the middle and then bouncing outside. I think Craig Lumpkin's the wild card in that. Additionally, I do expect to see Coach Olsen implement a, a couple more cuts at that option with Josh Johnson after seeing what Cam Newton was able to do against the Saints. I know it's going to be an unpopular pick because people are going to call me a fanboy, which is fine, but I think if we do those three things, we can compete with the New Orleans Saints. We've got to keep it a low-scoring affair. I don't want to get into a shootout. I'm going to pick a Bucks win because I always pick a Bucks win, assuming we do those things. Low-scoring, 17-13. to 13. Thanks for listening.